Kittens, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Monkey Boy Presents the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, and today I'm very happy to bring you issue number 80, Mr. Terrific. And this is a great character. If you're a fan of the Justice Society of America, especially over the last 20 years or so, you know this guy very well. He is quite cool, in my humble opinion. He is not the first character, though, to be known as Mr. Terrific. Once upon a time, there was a Golden Age character, a man by the name of Terry Sloan, who was the first Mr. Terrific and introduced everyone to the idea of fair play. That character actually was recently featured on an episode of Batman the Brave and the Bold, along with the entire Golden Age Justice Society, I do believe. It was pretty cool to see him uh, on an animated show. I think he may have even appeared in the background on Justice League Unlimited, but I'm not 100% sure on that. If you're not familiar with Mr. Terrific, either the Terry Sloan or this version here, Mr. Michael Holt, well, stay tuned, ladies and gents, because we're going to go through the magazine, which will tell you everything you need to know about Mr. Terrific. It will mostly cover the Michael Holt version of the character, although it does touch on Terry Sloan a little bit. And then we'll look at the figure itself, covering the good, the bad, and the ugly. Nice figure, good not great, we'll get to that shortly. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy issue number 80 of the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, Mr. Terrific. First up, the character section. introduces us to Michael Holt, a child prodigy who, at the age of 13, had already earned 14 PhDs, excelling in engineering, physics, and mathematics. He was also a gifted athlete who participated in the Olympics and learned multiple forms of martial arts. After graduating college, he went on to form a cybernetics company known as Cyberware, where he met and married his wife. suicide, Michael was suddenly confronted by three teenagers who were mugging him at gunpoint in order to get into a gang. Before the thugs could harm Michael, they were stopped by Detective Jim Corrigan, also known as the ghostly hero, the Spectre. By these Golden Age heroes, Michael Holt used his vast resources and his superior intellect to create cybernetic weaponry and a new costume to fight crime as the new Mr. Terrific. Not long after becoming Mr. Terrific, he was granted membership into the Justice Society of America, impressing them with both his physical and technological abilities. Mr. Terrific is also one of the few members of the JSA to serve as chairman of the team. He proved to be one of the most popular chairmen in the JSA, striking a chord with normal everyday citizens, and one of their most capable leaders when he had to lead the JSA against a former member known as Black Adam after he had seized control of the nation of Kondok. After 
after he and Rip Hunter returned to the proper timeline, Mr. Terrific joined up with a government agency known as Checkmate and was given the code name White King, where he fell in love with his second in command, Sasha Bordeaux, also known as Black Queen. The last couple pages bring us up to speed with the character, at least at the time of this publication, and we see Mr. Terrific having a near-death experience after he is almost assassinated by the villain known as Kid Carnival. In a coma for a few decades, he awakens to find the continental United States is now a Nazi-controlled country ruled by the Fourth Reich. Next, we look at a couple of Mr. Terrific's classic stories. First up, JSA vs. Cobra. And this is an excellent story that's more of a spy thriller than it is a superhero saga. We find Mr. Terrific and the Justice Society of America coming up against a terrorist organization known as Cobra, who are bent on bringing about an age of chaos in the DC Universe. Over the course of the story, we find Mr. Terrific having to balance his duties as a member of the JSA with his newfound duties as a member of the government organization known as Checkmate. It's a complex and excellently written story that is also beautifully illustrated. We also have Checkmate, Fall of the Wall. And this story focuses on Mr. Terrific as a member of Checkmate, the government organization that sort of keeps an eye on all the metahumans in the DCU, and he learns that his counterpart in the agency, a woman known as Amanda Waller, may be taking some of the most dangerous villains on the planet and shipping them off-world to another planet known as Salvation Run. Over the course of the story, Mr. Terrific uses his resources and his friends in the JSA to try and gain enough evidence to prove of what Waller is doing, while Waller is working to try and get evidence against Mr. Terrific to have him kicked out of Checkmate. It ends in an extremely dramatic showdown between the two, and it's a lot of fun. Next, we look at some of Mr. Terrific's friends and foes, including his girlfriend, Sasha Bardot, and his JSA teammate, the Golden Age Green Lantern, Alan Scott. Finally, the iconography section looks at a few of the other brilliant minds in the DC Universe. We first meet a boy who grew up in the 1940s during World War II named Johnny Genius Jones, who used his superior intellect to help try and solve crimes and mysteries as the hero Answer Man. Dr. Silas Stone, who works at Star Labs in Metropolis, a brilliant cybernetic engineer who used his own technology to save the life of his son Victor, who would go on to become the Teen Titan Cyborg. Finally, we meet Dr. Niles Calder, who was a scientist that brought together a misfit group of heroes that came to be known as the Doom Patrol, and Dr. Emile Hamilton, Superman's former chief scientific advisor at Star Labs, who unfortunately lost his mind and became the villain known as Ruin. Here we have Mr. Terrific, the Michael Holt version, of course, although I really like Terry Sloan as well. I understand why they went with the more modern age and not so much the golden age version of the character. It works, it's appropriate, and he looks really great with the other JSA members, which we'll see here in just a moment. But the figure itself, really, really nice. He's not excellent, he's not a Hawkman type of character up there with some of those guys, but he is really well detailed, great sculpt. Love the musculature, love the jacket especially on this guy. It is perfect. That's sort of his signature with the fair play on the sleeves. It's done very well here too. And it's not just on that sleeve, it's even on the sleeve that he's rolling up. And can I just say, I love that rolling up detail. I think it's so cool, it's very aggressive. 
and you can see just the last few letters of play there on the sleeve all that red piping is really pulled off nicely it's clean uh, great paint job on this guy you can see there also the terrific on the back of the jacket is terrific it really is cool and it's something that I wasn't honestly expecting it was a nice little surprise when I took him out of the box uh, the team mask is nice all the way down to the boots and the legs you can see again clean edges nice sculpt I do love the paint job on this guy I think the colors are great um, and he's overall very nice not perfect um, we'll talk about some of the problems I have with him here in just a moment Mr. Terrific stands atop the classic DC logo and the underside of his base features his name and serial number. To give you a sense of size and scale, here he is with the other members of the Justice Society of America that Eagle Moss has produced so far. Mr. Terrific is a really terrific figure, honestly. It's a very good figure. He's not great just because he's another pretty simple character by design, but it's a very faithful adaptation of that character. It's a great figure to add to your JSA collection if you're a fan. We'll begin, as always, with the good. I really like the pose a lot, to be honest with you. I think it's cool. I think it's tough looking. I like how he's rolling up a sleeve, getting ready for a fight. Love the costume choice. Uh, he's accurate, really, for what he is, as simply designed as he is. This guy is almost perfect, to be honest with you. The sculpting is also nice. There's great musculature, lots of wrinkles and crinkles in the jacket, and even on the boots, as you can see. There's also clean paint on this guy, for the most part. Lots of clean edges, no bleeding, really. Like the red highlights on those boots, too. It's a nice way to break him up a little bit, so it's not all black and white on the lower body. And you can see the lower body, how clean it is, but the upper body is where he really shines. That jacket is awesome. There's so many details. The sculpt is outstanding on the upper body. Great musculature, lots of shadowing and shading going on so you can make out every wrinkle and crinkle. That rolled up sleeve is an awesome touch. You can see the play of fair play on that sleeve. His flesh tone is really nice and it's a great type of paint. It looks like skin. It's got a great texture to it. Um, the back of the jacket is also fantastic with that terrific. And you can see that red piping is all over the jacket along the collar, along all the seams, and it's just so cool. It it's really highlights the jacket and the figure itself it's really cool so he's not just a solid black and white he also has that fair play down the right sleeve as well finally the head sculpt is really nice I just wish he looked a little more aggressive I'll talk about that in the next segment but it is cool I love that mask it's a great mask the way it looks like a T and it covers his eyes his nose and his mouth I love the hairstyle on him again the skin tone is great and it's overall an okay head sculpt Moving on to the bad, the only major issue I have with the figure are the fact that he has decals. Both the Play and Fair Play logos on the arms and the Terrific on the back are stickers, which is sad. I wish it was fully hand-painted since it is supposed to be a hand-painted figure, but it does look good. Also a nitpick I have is the face. I wish The head sculpt is very nice, I just wish the face looked a bit tougher. He doesn't look strong enough here. He looks too happy for me. That's just a minor nitpick though, it's a nice head sculpt overall. Lastly, and this is just a fanboy wish, I wish they had included his orbs, the T-orbs that he has, either in a hand or floating off the base using a translucent plastic piece to prop it up. It would have been a nice touch since he does usually have those, but again, just a pipe dream. Finally, the ugly. There is nothing ugly about this guy. He is a solid lead figure, nothing bendable, breakable, weak on him at all. Overall, I really like this figure a lot. I think he's a nice addition. I think he is a unique looking character. I really love the jacket too. For whatever reason, I just think it's so cool. And the mask. I love that team mask. He's got a great design, as simplistic as he is. If you're a fan of the JSA, I think you need to have this guy. He has been their leader for quite some time, and he's just really cool to have with the other JSAers. Is he for everyone? Probably not, but I, I like him. I recommend checking him out and I think he is a lot of fun. He is quite terrific, and I hope you have had a terrific time with my review of Mr. Terrific. Please stay tuned for a quick teaser of the next figure in line. It is yet another hero, ladies and gentlemen, and it's another female hero. Very excited to bring this one to you, another member of Batman's family. A more recent addition to Batman's family, actually, and one of my favorites, personally, so I'm very excited to bring that to you. Please stay tuned for that teaser, as always. I am your host, the Monkey Boy, aka J to his friends. Thanks for watching.